songs chase me around. They suggest themselves to me usually at the most inconvenient time. Like I'm waiting in the grocery store line. I could fill every dustbin in my house with, with, the, uh, with the lyrics to some of the songs. If I had the choice, I would choose to live back when Calypso brought the news. If I had the choice, I would choose to live right back when Calypso brought the news. No more reporters, no anchor men. No recorder, no pad and pen. No nosy cameras to point and shoot. No red ink to cross out the truth. Cheers, three cheers, America. I hear how old you get I grew up in, in Digo Martin in Trinidad. It's a, it's a suburb really of Port of Spain. It was a beautiful place to grow up in a lot of ways. It was a very tightly lit neighborhood full of interesting people and characters. And we had a very adventurous, rollicking youth there. On a bright spring day, near the approach and made my spirit love the season and drew me away. I arrived in Canada as a young teenager with my mother. I was angry, frustrated, nostalgic. I spent a lot of time reading. I begged for a guitar for Christmas. Give me an expression for so much of the turmoil that I felt, you know, but also so many ideas that were coming to me. It was a time of, it was a time of uneasiness, but a time of great discovery. Right back to the start, I remember. All the matters remember. I remember visiting Trinidad when I was uh, when I was 18, and my uh, my father took me to a Calypso tent, which I heard that music uh, all the time growing up. Up until that point, I had actually not seen it in a tent, which is its setting. That night, I was uh, I was mesmerized. These various Calypsonians got up and sang extremely witty songs about all of the, the uh, wayward politics of the day. Just the relationship with the audience, the heckling, the verbal duels between the MC and all in the biting good nature which is really at the soul of Calypso. So ever since then I was, I was writing, starting to write in the form, you know, in the, in the style. Cobo Town began as this, uh, this meandering into the world of Calypso but with all of the musical vocabulary of of the, the 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 time and the place that I was living, which at the time was was bustling Toronto. Imran is a factory hand up in Brixton. Shadon runs a sweet stand down in Washington. Sally is down in San Francisco, and I'm here in Toronto. And when we recording with Ivan Durand, it's been a case of working in dialogue with somebody who has done profound things with the music of the region. He's a very challenging producer. The criteria that he has placed on things is that while the, the folkloric Trinidadian element is very powerful over the record, people have got to be able to relate to it, you know? It's got to be able to engage, to, to capture people's ears, you know, capture people's imaginations. Let us go by the light of an angry star, follow the megaphones drone to the edge of a park where the revolution howls like a wolf in the dark, can't sleep from the deep, move swift like a shark, climbing up the sand to the belly, exposed, then flash the slash, and then the jaws are closed, and then the victim dashes in his final throws as he sees things red as a rose. Kingdom come, drawn by the smell of the blood that chum. The best way to represent anything that you really come from is to, is to really be yourself in whatever you're doing. I, I want to recover what is beautiful, what is powerful. And because I feel that that is the thing that resonates across the barriers, you know? Music has a great capacity to be a bridge, say something to somebody that wouldn't be listening to it otherwise. The moon shone brightly, nightly, casting its glimmer, its shimmer, ever so slightly down the silent sleeping all. It was all that I needed for a call. The night breeze blew sprightly to tease us, spite me, and I tiptoed out of us so lightly. No sound to announce that I was on. Out of any place where the pale moon shone. 